Y'all's about to go down. I said y'all was about to go down. What's going on? What's going on? Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to a taping of the Urban Health Nurse Educator. I am your host, Steve Belcher. This morning, we're going to be talking about hemodialysis catheters, how to keep yours working well. Now, this broadcast is directed specially to kidney warriors who may have a hemodialysis catheter. And you may say, Steve, especially if you're new or you haven't made dialysis yet or you or you know uh, you had a, a, a catheter, but for many people who don't know what a catheter looks like, this is a hemodialysis catheter right here. This is one. So let's talk about hemodialysis catheters how to keep yours working well. Share this broadcast because let me tell you something. A lot of patients that have these catheters, you got people that have them in for two months, three months, six months, a year, two years. You have to know how these devices work and how to keep them operational and keep yourself from obtaining a bloodstream infection. That's right. If you have something like this, you can and are subjected to a bloodstream infection. So let's talk about hemodialysis catheters. We all know that hemodialysis is a treatment use when your kidneys fail and can no longer clean your blood and remove the extra fluid from your body. A hemodialysis access or vascular access, which is in your arm, is a way to reach your blood for hemodialysis. Now, as I showed many warriors and for people who haven't seen the needles, let me grab it right quick. So this right here is a 15 gauge, one inch hemodialysis needle that is used for uh, hemodialysis cannulation. Now look at that sharp bevel at the top. Now people are getting stuck with this needle twice, three days a week. Now, if you receive hemodialysis, your access is one of the following, which I said, a AV fistula, which is made by joining an artery and a vein in your arm, an AV graft made by using a soft tubing to join an artery and a vein in your arm, and a catheter, a soft tube that is placed in a large vein, usually your neck. And this is the tube that they're talking about right here. The hemodialysis catheter. This is the tube. Share this broadcast because if you're new to dialysis and you have this catheter or you know someone on dialysis to have this catheter, they should be watching this video right now or this, bro this live broadcast because no dialysis clinic, uh, especially during this pandemic, is going to sit down with you and find a catheter like this and show you and, and just go over the uh, points that you need to know for hemodialysis and taking care of that catheter. Now, let me just say this. 
the AV fistula, right? The AV fistula, which uses your artery and your veins, is the preferred access of choice as far as permanent access placement. That's the AV fistula because it's using your own veins. Then the AV graft, arterial venous graft, is the next preferred choice for a permanent access. The catheter is only recommended for temporary access. Now you have another access uh, for emergent access. That's this, which is called the IJ. And this is inserted in your, your jugular vein on the side of your neck. I've heard many warriors say this is very uncomfortable because when it's in your neck, it's taped, it's sutured down. And when you're moving around, you know, it's, it's moving with you. So let's get right into the hemodialysis catheter. Again, if you know somebody with this, Share this broadcast afterwards. I know it's 12 midnight on the East Coast. Well, 1225. But uh, if you know somebody with this, share this broadcast with them in the morning. Let them know, hey, the urban health nurse educator got a video out, hemodialysis catheter, how to keep yours working. Now, the catheter is used for hemodialysis is a tunnel catheter. Now, this is what this is. It's a tunnel catheter, meaning that because it is placed under the skin, it's referred to as tunnel. There are two types of tunnel catheters, cuffed or non-cuffed. Non-cuffed tunnel catheters are used for emergencies and for short periods up to three weeks tunnel cuff catheters a type recommended by uh many people or many uh, organizations uh for temporary access can be used for longer than three weeks when an AV fistula or graft has been placed but is not yet ready for use. There are no other options for permanent access. For example, when a patient's blood vessels are no longer strong enough for a fistula or a graft, then people have to get uh, catheters put in. Now, catheters have two openings. And, and y'all seeing these, they're, they're very distinct. Uh, one is the red, right? And then that's to draw the blood out. This one right here, the red. We aspirate, blood comes out. Then you have the blue from your vein where it goes back in. Now, the clean blood goes back into the blue line. As the blood leaves the arterial, remember, it goes through the catheter where it's cleaned, and then the clean blood goes through the venous line. So, how do you take care of that catheter? This long piece that goes into your heart and that sticks out, how do you take care of it? Do you know? Has anyone instructed you how to care for this properly? If not, the urban health nurse educator is going to do that right now. By taking good care of your access, it will last longer and you will prevent problems such as infections, 
and clotting. That is the, let me tell you, infection and clotting with this are the two major complications that comes from this. Especially when you have a clot in this line right here, we had to put a medication in, we call it a clot buster to dissolve the clot. We leave it, we instill it in the catheter and we leave it in there for up to 45 minutes. We come back, we put the syringe is already on and we aspirate and we should have opening or what we call patency where now we're able to get to the bloodstream and that clot has been dissolved by the medication. So here are some uh, important steps that the urban health nurse educator uh, wants you to take. Keep the catheter dressing clean and dry. Very important. Make sure the area of the insertion site is clean. Matter of fact, I want to show you what I'm talking about. Hold tight for a moment. So, right here, make sure the area of the insertion site, and you see where that arrow is pointing, uh, you got to make sure that area is clean and that the carotene changes the dressing at each dialysis session. Keep an emergency dressing kit at home. Okay, very important. You can get these kits or uh, find uh, bandage changes at um, pharmaceutical stores, uh, medical supply stores, Amazon, places like that. In case you need to change your dressing in between treatments, I've seen kidney warriors come back to dialysis with the dressing removed, just like this picture. And that can set you up for an infection. So that's why it's important to have a dressing kit at home. In case in the summertime the, cat, the dressing comes off or whatever the case may be. Also, ask your dialysis care team to teach you how to change your dressing in case of an emergency. All right, let me remove this banner so I can show. Well, let me show you something, guys. Right here, these caps. Never remove these caps on your catheter, better yet, let me show you one that you'll be using. Never remove these caps right here. Never take them off, right? Never take them off. I've seen, and this is unfortunate. I've seen drug addicts um, come back to dialysis and have uh, dope or black blood in here. I mean, when they left, it was clear. And when they came back, it was blood in it. But, and they also had a history of drug abuse. So we knew that they used the catheter to inject the uh, heroin in. But you can, it's very dangerous because air can get into the catheter and that goes to the heart. Do not shower or swim. I mean, they want you to take a bath. You can't get that catheter wet, that site wet, because bacteria uh, is in that water. And moisture can cause infection. Taking a bath is really the safest way. Um, 
that does not allow your catheter or catheter dressing to get wet. But some warriors do take showers. They put saran wrap over the dressing. You may have a, a catheter that has a dressing like this on it, right? And this is on it like that. The dressing, it kind of looks like that. over it like that if this gets wet then the skin is exposed like this the skin is exposed if it's missing the dressing but some warriors wrap saran wrap around that their dressing and that and don't let the uh water from the shower hit the catheter area. Also, wear a mask over your nose and mouth anytime the catheter is open to prevent bacteria from entering the catheter and your bloodstream. Professionals changing the dressing should wear a mask and gloves as well. The caps and clamps, let me show you. The caps right here, you see those two white pieces. I'm sorry, the two white pieces are the clamps, and then the caps are at the bottom of your catheter should be kept tightly closed when not being used for dialysis. Only the care team should use your dialysis catheter to draw blood or to give medications or fluid. If the area around your catheter feels sore or looks red, call your dialysis care team at once. Ask your dialysis team about signs and symptoms that require immediate attention. And let me give you those signs and symptoms that uh, require immediate attention. Redness discharge of pus, fever, drainage, chills, also uh, if the area around your catheter feels sore or looks red, Call your dialysis care team at once. Again, ask your dialysis care team about signs and symptoms that require immediate attention. Also, know what your KT over V and your URR, which is your reduction ratio is. All right. Know what that is, those numbers, because this catheter uh, plays a big role. KT over V and URR are numbers that tell you how much dialysis you are getting. If you are receiving enough dialysis, your KT over V should be at least 1.2. If URR is used, it should be 65 or 66% or more. If your numbers are too low, one possible cause may be that your access is not working well. Ask your dialysis team to check your access. How many warriors have this access and had to go back and forth to the access center? I mean, it happens all the time. You got warriors that have uh, repeated catheters on both sides of the uh, chest. Should I have any concerns about my catheter? Sometimes, even when you are very careful, your catheter may clot or become infected. Clots. Clots can form inside the opening of the catheter or form on the outside of the catheter 
and block the opening. This can cause blood to flow at a slower rate than the rate your doctor ordered. If the blood flow rate remains low for more than one dialysis treatment, the catheter should be checked and treated the same day. It is important to restore the recommended blood flow rate and treat clots that are forming so that your catheter, right, continues to work well and you get the amount of dialysis you need. How many warriors with a catheter know about what I just read? Knew about clots and how it affects your catheter. That's what we teach here at Urban Health Outreach Media. Did you know if the blood flow rate remains low for more than one dialysis treatment, the catheter should be checked and treated the same day? What about infection? Infection can also cause I'm sorry, infection can also occur even with a good blood flow rate. It is important to follow your catheter care instructions exactly as you were taught in order to avoid infection. You should know the following signs and symptoms of a catheter infection and report them to your doctor or dialysis team right away so you can get the proper treatment as quickly as possible. Here are the signs and symptoms of a catheter infection, as I mentioned before. Fever, chills, drainage from the catheter access site, redness or tenderness around the catheter access site. Now, where that arrow is pointing, that is the catheter exit site. And general feeling of weakness and illness. Now, what's the treatment for an infection? Depends on the type of infection, but may include an ointment applied directly to the infected area. If it's an exit site infection, or antibiotic medication if there is drainage from the exit site, or an intravenous IV antibiotic, which is a solution containing an antibiotic that is administered directly into a vein. If the infection has spread to the blood, now you're going to get an IV antibiotic if the infection has spread it to the blood, which we call a bloodstream infection. Please share this broadcast. Share this broadcast. This is the Urban Health Nurse Educator giving you quick tips on hemodialysis catheters, how to keep yours working well. So as we continue, again, share this broadcast, share this broadcast. Now, what happens, and you got to think about this because this has happened to a lot of warriors, a lot of warriors. What happens when my catheter is not working well? A lot of warriors don't know if their catheter is not working well because the technician may not tell them that. So what happened is a decrease in the blood flow rate ordered by your doctor is a sign the catheter 
is not working as it should. Now, how many warriors with catheters uh, has been told we have to turn your blood flow rate down because your machine kept going off and the only, re only way they can keep your machine from going off is to turn or reduce your blood flow rate. I know because I had to do it myself, guys. If this occurs for more than one treatment in a week, the catheter should be checked. The lower blood flow rate will cause you to receive less dialysis. You will then need a longer than usual hemodialysis treatment to get the proper amount of dialysis. So if we look at this guy's catheter, we see it looks clean. You don't see any drainage. Uh, the only thing is when you had these type of catheters over a period of time and you put tape or some type of adhesive dressing on it, that adhesive can stick to that catheter plastic piece where that arrow is pointing. Now, another sign that your catheter is not working well may be the pre-pump arterial pressure alarm. Very common, very common. When they say your arterial alarm is dropping, if you got a catheter, how many warriors had to be leaned back in the chair, what we call the Trendelenburg, or how many warriors had to cough? The technician or nurse told you to take a deep breath. So when that happens, these sounds notify the care team when the alarm goes off that your catheter or vascular access is not allowing a free draw of blood. This can be a sign that a clot is forming in the catheter, blocking the flow of blood. Now, what can be done to remove the blockage from my catheter? And as I uh, mentioned to you guys, with this catheter, what can be done? We administer medicine in each each limb, right? There's some numbers on here. I want to see if you guys can see it. You see those numbers? Wait a minute. Let me turn it upside down. I'm sorry. All right. You see those numbers? You see where it says 12 French, 12 F, F times 24 centimeters. That's the length of the catheter. But when you look right there and where you see it says uh, A 1.7 cc's, uh, V 1.7 cc's. Can you see that right there? You got A 1.7, V 1.7 cc's. That's how much you instill in the catheter in each limb. Now, treatment is the administration of what we call a clot buster medication called tissue plasma let me let me get this word right tissue plasminogen <laughs> plasminogen activator or tpa most dialysis center can give the medication while you are in your dialysis chair 
And, and what we do, we put it in and you and it dwells for about 45 minutes and we come back and check it for patency. See if the catheter is open. Um, we give it to your chair, thus preventing a hospital visit. If you are at the end of your treatment, TPA can be given just before your next dialysis appointment. Ask your doctor how you can arrange to be given this medication before your next treatment, especially if you're having issues with this. If the clot is not treated when signs and symptoms of an early clot are found, the catheter can progress to be fully clotted. You may then be required to visit the hospital or vascular lab to have the catheter checked and possibly exchanged for a completely new catheter. How many warriors, if you're watching this broadcast uh, later and you see it now, how many of you had multiple catheters? This side of the neck, that side of the neck. I mean, sometimes that can be avoided if you can catch the problem earlier. And that's why we're doing this broadcast so you'll know, right? You can recognize if your blood flow rate is being turned down and no one's probably telling you about your catheter or the nurses and the tech trying to pull blood out and they can't get it and they pushing back and forth and flushing it and you wonder what the devil is going on well they having issues with the catheter how is the medication the clot buster given as i mentioned we draw it up it comes in a powdered form in two vials right we put bacterial water or sterile water we draw it up put it in there mix it up right get the three cc syringe put it clean out the the stopper with alcohol draw it up usually it's two cc's right or the amount of the length of the catheter as i showed you the length of the catheter in this case 1.7 for each limb open these up go go back to the chair open these up of course with gloves and the mask and we open, unclamp these, these clamps on the side, unclamp that, and steal the medicine, right? Clamp it, and then we come back. It needs to stay in anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes to break down the clot. After that time, um, we do that and we still not getting the flow. We can repeat the process. By that time, we got blood. What are the benefits of treating the clot early? By restoring your blood flow, hemodialysis can work uh, as it should to remove the toxins and excess fluid from your body. You can get your whole treatment. Taking care of the clot early results in fewer treatment interruptions and improved quality of life on dialysis. Three, other benefits are the prevention of additional health problems uh, and the chance to live longer on dialysis. What can you do to keep your catheter working well? Learn as much as possible about your prescribed treatment plan. We always encourage that on our shows. We always, um, your blood flow rate, 
how often and how long you need treatments. We always talk about checking your uh, treatment orders, uh, how long you run, what your blood flow rate is, what it should be, if they're turning it down, why they uh, reducing your blood flow rate. Because if your blood flow rate is being reduced, you're not getting a good treatment, bottom line. And you're going to feel horrible. Horrible. Um, two, follow the treatment plan. Stay for your full treatment. It's not if you get off early. That is not the way to go, getting off early. You're doing yourself a disservice. The more treatment, the better you feel. Okay, keep your dialysis appointments. You got to keep them in order to feel well. You remember your kidneys work 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Arrive on time for your hemodialysis treatment because let me tell you something. These clinics are not cutting any slack. If you 15 minutes late or maybe 20 minutes late, and it's in the evening time, and you're the last person coming in, they're going to cut your treatment. They're going to, if you run four hours and you get there 15 minutes late, most clinics cut your treatment time by 15 minutes. How do I know? Because I was a caregiver that did that because I was forced to do that from my clinical administrator you know why because they wanted to cut employees time people been there 13 14 15 hours if you got five techs being paid 18 19 dollars an hour and nurses there making 30 40 dollars an hour 13 and 14 hours a day and the patient comes late, right? And the shift's supposed to end at seven. They're supposed to be there at three. They get there at 3.15. They're going to cut 15. They're going to chop 15 minutes off your time, whether it was your fault or not for getting there late. So you just got to be mindful of this. They don't care how much treatment time you get. They get, if you even get, listen, let me tell you something. <clears throat> the way dialysis work and the way, and it's unfortunate, the way these companies get paid is through economies of scale. The, when these machines are running, it doesn't matter if the machine is running 15 minutes. They're still getting paid. Let's say you go on treatment and you only get 20 minutes because this catheter is clotted. And they tell you, we can't dialyze you. Uh, you got on the machine and you was on for less than 30 minutes, 20 minutes. And they say they got to turn your return your blood because your catheter's not working right. They still get paid. It ain't no, oh, you didn't get your treatment. We not getting paid. No, your blood hit when your blood hit this filter. If it's only for five minutes, your blood hit this filter and one circular rotation. And it comes back to you, you're being charged whether you complete three minutes or three hours, you're still being charged. Okay. So let's not get this twisted on how uh, these big companies, how you know they care for you. Yes, it's not that. Is not the staff that directly work with you like myself. We care, right? But we have to enforce what they tell us 
or we get written up or get fired. Most places, right, where, where technicians or nurses work are, um, what's that? Uh, um, what, what is it when you they get fired? Oh, at will. They're at will states like Merlin. The per, you don't do something because you felt it was the right thing to do. The administrator could come in the next day and fire you without cause. <laughs> Bye. Adios. So let's not get this twisted when it comes to your care. You need to be in full control of your care because the clinics, especially the DeVitas and the Fresenius, they're Fortune 500 companies traded on the New York Stock Exchange, meaning they got shareholders. They got to get their earnings per share. Let's not go into uh, finances and, 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 and all that. It's just absolutely ridiculous, but it's capitalism at its best. Capitalism at its best. And when you have these multiple multiple machines running, 30, 40 people running at one time, three days a week, then you begin to see the uh, enormity of it and um, just being aware of your treatment and being mindful, especially you had this catheter right here, because many warriors passed away from a bloodstream infection having this thing right here. Now, ask your doctor, have a conversation with this guy. Just don't let him walk past your machine and check you off. You may be asleep. How many warriors be asleep Go to and it's, it's it's normal. You're tired, you're coming from work, you sleep, right? You sleep, you know, machine going off, you wake up. Next day, you know, the doctor is five patients down. Five patients down, you know, he unpassed you. And you're like, is that Dr. So-and-so? Let him know I want to see him. The next thing you know, he come by for a quick second. Say something, and he's out the door. Do you know you're being charged for that? <laughs> Highway robbery. You don't even get to spend four minutes with the guy. Yet you get a bill for $800, $300 for three minutes of, of, of uh, seeing this guy, $100 a minute, some, some crap like that. Look, if you feel you're not getting a good treatment, the staff is not doing what they're supposed to do in cleaning this and handling stuff right, Share those concerns with your doctor. I'm telling you, you may want to ask them these following questions. Even the care team, how can you tell if your catheter is not working? And I'm telling you something, if you can't get the answers from them, you come back to Urban Health Outreach Media and you ask us. Okay, I'm a I'm a 33 year dialysis nurse. If they won't give you the answer, I will. Another question: Ask them what is the flow rate that your doctor ordered. You want to know that. What is your blood flow rate that your doctor ordered? when he started you on dialysis. Because some technicians, if your catheter is not working or if it's an issue, 
This is the real deal. As they say, for real, for real, some texts, they don't tell you anything. If you start having issues, they'll just turn the blood flow rate down, especially if you sleep and don't tell you. So you may think you at 400 running, and in all actuality, you're running at 250 or 300. And don't even know it. Don't even know it. But how would you know that? By taking charge of your treatment. Have them turn the machine around so you can see what your blood flow rate is. What alarm is going off when the machine goes off. That's what you need to do. Have them turn that machine around where you can observe for yourself what your blood flow rate is, what your dialysate flow rate is, right? What your uh, arterial pressure is, what your venous pressure is, what your temperature is, what your conductivity rate is. That's what you need to know. You'll be ahead of the game. Also, you need to ask, why does the flow rate for my catheter need to be at this level? Ask what your, know what your prescribed order is. If your prescribed order is 400 and you look on that machine and you see 300, Ask them why your blood flow rate is at 300. Don't just go take it for granted. Also, ask them if my blood flow, if, if my flow rate should go down, when will you be given clot dissolving medication? Ask them that. Some units don't want to give it to you because they want to save money. They want the nurses to flush it with normal saline and do this and that. That clot buster, TPA, calf flow, whatever you want to call it, is expensive. Very, very expensive. Also, you want to ask them, will the clot dissolving medication interrupt your dialysis treatment? And if so, what will happen to the rest of your treatment? <laughs> How many warriors had to end their treatment early because the catheter or interrupted because they had to give the clot buster med? Also ask them, how will you put the clot dissolving medication in your catheter. How long do you have to wait before it works? Listen, if you got to get this medicine, they don't add on that treatment time. <laughs> no, they don't do that. So if they have to interrupt 30 minutes of a four hour treatment, you don't get that 30 minutes back. I'm telling you what these nurses do. They don't make up for that lost time. And if they do, you got a damn good nurse, all right? I'm telling you, if you have a catheter, you're four hours, say you run it and the catheter stop working at an hour and a half in the treatment and they got to put the medication in for 30 minutes. Now that's, that's two hours right there, all right? You done lost 30 minutes of treatment. When they, when they start you back, they recalibrate, re, no, they readjust your time so you can come off with the rest of the patients. And especially if it's another shift behind you, I'm sorry, or after you, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. They're not going to slow up that next shift or, or let you run longer. All right. Um, also, keep a record of your KT over V and URR numbers. Very important. Um, 
last but not least, ask them what are the signs and symptoms of an infection. I don't went over it. Uh, you just join in. You can go back and see. But this is very, very uh, impertinent information uh, to know about your catheter. So with that being said, tomorrow we're going to talk about protecting your CVC, all right, or your hemodialysis. Thank you for watching this broadcast of the Urban Health Nurse Educator. I am your host, Steve Belcher. God bless you and have a good morning. Peace. Y'all about to go down. I said y'all about to go down.